Well, Razorback fans, it is the ultimate question. Can this Razorback baseball team win the College World Series title this year? It's going to be tough, but we can discuss and we're going to talk about that as well as getting to some Razorback football, talking about KJ Jefferson, and then a little update on our Omaha trip to the College World Series. This is the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 The Buzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday. And uh, the camera angle is a little different, I know, for those of you watching on YouTube, because uh, just the story of my life, things keep happening. I've apparently lost my little USB adapter to my webcam so to plug it in. So instead, having to use the actual internal webcam, I had to order some new ones. It's just, again, the way it goes with the travels everywhere. I mean, I just made it from Chapel Hill yesterday and had a crazy time uh, with that. But either way, that doesn't matter. We're here now, and we know that uh, Arkansas is going to be heading up to Omaha for the College World Series. And I think that uh, when I was trying to say of, like, you know, just kind of doing my previewing and looking at some of the teams in the field and, everything like that, I started kind of going through the same reasoning and the same logic that I do a lot of times. And as you, most of you who've been listening to this podcast for a long time, probably know of looking at whether it's football, basketball, or baseball, can Arkansas do this or will Arkansas do this or how can Arkansas do this? You know, whatever it is, it's just about discussing that question. And since Arkansas has officially made it to Omaha for the College World Series, the question is, can Arkansas win the College World Series title? First ever, can they do that? Knowing the teams that are in the field, knowing how Arkansas is playing right now, knowing the players that they have in, in those positions, all those things together, can this team actually win the College World Series title? And... That one was a tough one for me to go through because almost just like every sport, you never know. I mean, you never know what baseball was going to have happen. You never know who's going to do what. I mean, games and, and especially in baseball, I mean, one hit changes the entire game, you know, one single play. So it's tough. It's tough to sit here and try to say for sure or for certain, at least, if Arkansas is going to win the title because – there's just so many different things that have to happen. And you can say that about anybody in the College World Series field. It's not just Arkansas. I mean, all eight teams, they have to have not only playing their best baseball, but have a little luck go their way too. That's just part of it. But when I was looking at just who Arkansas is going to face, which are facing Stanford, the number two overall seed in the first game on Saturday, and then they're in a bracket also with Auburn and Ole Miss, including Stanford. So all three of those teams Arkansas has faced this year, for those of you who don't remember, so they faced Stanford earlier this season, and then I think it was in Round Rock, and actually lost that game to Stanford. So they're pretty familiar with each team. And then on the other side of it, of course, you have A&M, Texas, Oklahoma, Notre Dame. But just looking at Arkansas, because that's all we care about, and that's all the only thing that matters. You know, I look at the way Arkansas is playing right now. And I look at the teams that they're going to be facing, Auburn and Ole Miss, potentially, of course. Auburn and Ole Miss, two teams that you beat in, in series this year. In fact, uh, one of those series being on the road against Auburn, you beat them. Uh, you thought, throw in Stanford again, a team that's really good and all that. I Arkansas, well, let me put it this way. Game one is going to decide it. Game one is going to decide if this Arkansas team is ready, if this Arkansas team is going to go to the next level and play for a Carl's World Series title because Stanford is the number two overall seed and just basing it off of results of the regular season and the talent that they have, they're the second best team in the country. Now, have they gone through as grueling of a schedule as some SEC teams have or, or maybe even some Big 12 teams have like we were in the field there too or even ACC with Notre Dame? I don't know. I think the Pac-12 has had some good teams. But if you just look at their postseason, you know, they struggled a little bit. And, you know, there were some close calls that they had, which you're going to have those, but just some close calls that you had in some of these games where if you're an Arkansas fan, they don't scare you. Like, they don't see anything about them that makes you think like, oh, man, 
There's no way they win this game, but they are a really good team. And if they were able to beat Stanford, because we know also in the College World Series in Omaha, it's all about winning those early games. Because if we win those early games, that sets you up for, for better rest, sets you up for uh, an easier way of finding your pitching rotation, and it just kind of gives you that advantage. Because we know it's double elimination to start. And so, to me, if you beat Stanford in game one, there's no reason you can't beat Auburn and or Ole Miss, whoever wins that game in game two. And if you do that, suddenly you're in the driver's seat. You're in the driver's seat to play in the finals. And then we'll see how that plays out. And then, you know, if you – we'll just – because I think Auburn will beat Ole Miss, just to be honest. I think Auburn will beat Ole Miss. And so, say, if Arkansas beats Stanford and then you beat Auburn, then – I believe Stanford will beat Ole Miss, and Ole Miss will be eliminated. They'll be zero two in barbecue, and then Auburn and Stanford will play. If you ever see the winner who ends up playing Arkansas once again, and then if Arkansas wins again, then they're done. Like they go, they move on. And so, just knowing all that, like Arkansas could really find themselves to where they've gotten some great starts from some pitching. Like you know, Connor Nolan's done great, and Will McIntyre. I think if it comes to that, where Arkansas finds a way to win Game One with Connor, that they're going to have Will McIntyre start in Game Two. And then you got Hagen Smith as your closer, as well as Brady Tiger. Uh, you know, Evan Taylor, Zach Morris, guys coming out of the bullpen there too. Uh, and then, you know, we still know that Jackson Wiggins will be that game three guy, assuming that, you know, it gets to that point. And, and you'll have some other guys too. Cole Ramage, maybe, maybe Zeb Vermillion, if you really need to stretch it out. But you kind of know what you're going to be looking at when it comes to pitching and who's going to be playing what and everything. But then if you say win that bracket, you know, which if you win the bracket, you move on to the College World Series finals. And look at the top side of things where you got AM, you got Texas, you got Oklahoma, and you got Notre Dame. Now, you have played Texas AM this year and you lost in that series. And when you lost that series, that was really annoying because, like, you felt like you, 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 I think, yeah, that was the one that you had in both games that you lost runners at second and third with one out and couldn't score and you lost by like one run. So that's the stuff that just will eat you alive and you feel like there could be some redemptive. But a and playing really well right now, very well, but there's no reason to believe you can't beat them. Same with Texas, same with Notre Dame, same with Oklahoma. But, you know, of those four, doesn't matter. It doesn't, I think that they're all pretty evenly matched as far as I could, I would be, I wouldn't be shocked if any of those teams made the finals is what I'm saying. So, but none, of, but none of those teams really just jump out to you and scare you. Like, they know, they none of them just look like you have no chance against them. And so, I say all that to say this, and to answer the question of the whole theme of the podcast, if can Arkansas win the College World Series title? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. And I will probably be that guy that if Arkansas wins game one against Stanford, I will probably be that guy to where suddenly my expectation gets elevated and saying, because of the position you're in, there's no reason that you can't win two more games and move on to the finals. Because you beat Oklahoma State, who was a phenomenal team. I still think Oklahoma State was one of the best teams in the country, but you just beat them. You beat North Carolina. Like, I don't think that these teams that you're going to be facing are going to be any different than that or any better than that. Now, they may not be any worse than that either. But you are in a great position to know that with what you got going on as a team, the way guys are playing, not only, you know, your pitching, but your offense is coming around. We know about some of the players that have been stepping up, guys like Turner, guys like Stovall. Like, you have the recipe right now to win a College World Series title. But as we said, it's about matchups. It's about, you know, timing. And it's about luck. You got to have some things go your way. So they're absolutely capable. And I think that game one against Stanford is really going to be the telltale sign. Now, if they lose that game against Stanford, first off, this season's a success no matter what because you went to Omaha. Let's be honest about it. It's a successful season because you went to Omaha and that's all that matters. But if they found, if they lost to Stanford, and I think it'd just be really tough to try to climb back out of that hole because even if you beat Auburn and Ole Miss in the loser's bracket the next game, and you got to turn around and face Stanford once again. And then if you beat them then, then or you know, you'd have to play them again. So it's like, 
or, or whoever ends up winning. But still, you have to play more games in a shorter amount of time, and there could be potential where you have to face Stanford two more times, and that that would be a tough thing to go. So, but I think they're capable. I think that I think it absolutely could happen. But man, it's just baseball. You can never count on anything, and you can never guarantee anything in this stupid sport. But man, is it so beautiful! I got to tell you about Bill Bar, folks. They sent me some. Uh, now this is gonna sound crazy, but they sent me some mud pie uh bill bars and i'm I'm eating these things and i'm like okay well first off i don't eat like mud pie sounds disgusting i don't know if i want to do something like this but i uh i was i was actually tried it out and it was incredible once again like it's amazing just it doesn't matter the flavor they're always so good and they're so easy so convenient so healthy and you got to check it out as well so they have different flavors so you got to look at all their website at built.com check them all out I don't know whether they have flavors, but they have, you know, the discounts I mean, because you listen to this podcast and you love this podcast and you want to be able to uh, get deals just like we all do. Well, luckily for you, we got one for you. Built.com, enter in promo code LOCKED15. We'll get you 15% off your next order. Doesn't matter how many you order. Doesn't matter what you do about it. Simple as that. Built.com, promo code locked on for 15% off your next order. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right. Well, we are going to do a little football talk as well because uh, we know that that's always going on. And I want to give a shout out to Brandon Marcello of 247sports.com who wrote a, a really great article. Uh, and I encourage all of you to check it out about KJ Jefferson. And... Uh, I can't wait. To, I'm going to try to have him on my radio show today to, to really break it down and talk more about it. But it was really fascinating just to you know kind of hear the perspective of, of from KJ from Brandon about KJ, where it's simply titled KJ Jefferson is not just a hog who can run. And I started reading through it, and it's a it's kind of cool to see the understanding that of course Brandon has about dual threat quarterbacks and and their roles and you know, the type of players that they can be, but also just to see how so many times, you know, people like KJ Jefferson may not be given credit or enough credit for his throwing ability because everyone just thinks about how much of a runner he is, which he's a phenomenal runner. I mean, he's 6'3", 245 pounds. He's built like a truck and he can run fast now. Like there was times last year where he, I mean, I wasn't saying he was outrunning everybody, but he definitely did his thing. And so like just, I still believe, and I did a podcast on this, I still believe that he's like one of my favorite Razorback quarterbacks of all time just because of how he's played so far and, you know, the type of uh, excitement, inciting player that he can be. But the thing is, is that this year, when I, when I was going through this article, and again, check it out if you have a chance because it's really great. Uh, but what made me start thinking about it is Arkansas this year, we're going to find out the most about K.J. Jefferson, more so than even we did last year, I believe. Because last year... Having Traylon Burks was big. Let's just be honest about it. Having him on the on the field was big, and it was it was quarterback's best friend, somebody like that, and that talented to be able to help out. That's always nice. And then to add into the mix as well, uh, there was I think there was an element of surprise where a lot of people hadn't seen KJ necessarily, didn't know what he was capable of, uh, but went out there and balled out. Uh, I know he had he got banged up a few times too, and like the A and M game where he had to come out, but tough as nails, kid. I mean, still tough. Still taking, you know, going out there and taking hits and everything. So, like all, all those things and all those factors into where, you know, this year is going to be so fun to see just how KJ can can lead this team and and what he can do because we know he's got a clutch factor too. Like he he led Arkansas to uh, game winning drives or potential game winning drives against Ole Miss and Mississippi State, and Matt, just a beautiful drive and masterfully done on their part. Uh, so he, he's done that. He's going to have a great running back core around him. And like, I know we want to see more about his arm because and I think he's perfectly capable of his arm. But I'm just going to be curious about how much of the rushing attack are we going to see this year compared to last year? Like, is it going to be more emphasized? Is it going to be, uh, you know, something that they really try to put a lot of emphasis on? Or is it going to be the same balance as far as this many pass plays this many running plays this many passing yards this many rushing yards you know whatever which i think in theory that's what you always want you always want to have that balance but also in reality 
if you have a certain strength that's better than others, like if your running attack is much better than your passing attack, then you got to stick with what you're good at and stick with your strengths. So there's just going to be a lot of key elements to it. But the thing is, is that KJ is in a great position to where if he has a great year this year, which I think he will, another great year this year, people are really going to start talking about him in, in, a, in the NFL. And, you know, first round pick, I don't know, like that's because that's always tough to do where, especially if you're not even on the radar right now as a first round pick. But if he just plays to the level that we know he's capable of and does all that, yeah, I think he could be a absolutely a, a first round NFL pick and hopefully to a team that doesn't suck, you know, not too high. I don't want to see go too high. I don't want to see him go to, you know, a team like the, uh, which I'm, I, mean, I guess it wouldn't be Jacksonville or Cleveland or anything like that. Cause they already got their young quarterbacks, but um, I don't know. Washington don't really want to see him there with all the issues that they have. And I love seeing him in a Jets uniform, but Zach Wilson's fine. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what, what direction they would go with quarterback uh, or who, you know, who would be interested in them and who would be interested in getting a quarterback at that point anyways. Maybe the Texans. I don't know. But that that's way, way, way ahead. My point is, is this, is that, you know, KJ is going to be able to really elevate his stock this year and really showcase his abilities this year, more so than even last year, because the offense, every time you thought about Arkansas's offense last year, you thought about Traylon Burks. No, KJ was great, but Traylon Burks was the offense. Everyone knew that. This year, it's not going to be that way. The best player on the offense is going to be KJ Jefferson. He's the best player on this offense. So now, knowing he's the best player on this offense, knowing that you have a really good offense surrounding him with play players and personnel and coaching staff and everything, can he embrace that and move forward with it and do something great with it? That's going to be the ultimate question. Uh, we'll wrap things up and get to some Omaha talk as well as some plans for the podcast as well coming up here on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, so uh, final segment here on the podcast. I, I wanted to bring this up so I can you know make sure that everyone's staying on, on board with what we have going on there, because I know it's been tough. And again, I can't tell you I'm sorry I am that it's just been tough to be able to regularly do podcasts as much as I'd like because of travel, because of, uh, you know, having to do my radio show on top of covering the Razorbacks while they've been in uh, the regionals and super regionals. And so, again, I apologize. And I try to do as much as I can. And, and I try to, to even if it's like late night, try to put some out. And so, again, I'm sorry for that. But. Uh, now that we know that Arkansas is going to Omaha, I'm going to actually be leaving tomorrow morning for Omaha. And I'm going to be up there until the Razorbacks lose in Omaha. So that being said, I hope that it ends up going really well. I hope I'm up there for a very long time. That would be very cool. But just kind of bear with me on some stuff because of timing and schedule and all that. And also, since games are going to be on the weekend, I'm thinking about if I have time, especially – uh, if the games are early, like for instance, on Saturday, the Razorback baseball game is early on Saturday. So when the game's over and I got to go through post game and uh, uh, do all of that, you know, maybe Saturday night, I'll put up a podcast just kind of with a quick reaction of the games. It's kind of what I'm thinking. That's what I'm going to try to do. So even if it's not like during the week, I'll still put up a podcast, still put up a video on YouTube and all of that just to kind of recap and, and to, to go through things as well. And same thing on Sunday or you know, whatever, whatever, whatever the timing and scheduling is, I'll try to try to make it work and try to fit it all in as much as possible. Because I know that people are hungry for uh, for podcasts and just for content when it comes to Razorback baseball and, and everything, too. So I'll do my best to make that happen and to make that possible. So but yeah, the travel and everything's crazy. I, I've loved it, though. I mean, and I can't tell you how uh, thankful I am. And I know I say this a lot and maybe you're tired of hearing about it, but thankful I am to work at 1037 The Buzz, who you know, they just, they, they know, they understand, you know, they understand the uh, importance of covering these things, especially postseason play. Like when, you know, going to all these things, like the fact that they invest in it and, you know, sell it and, and be able to, to make money on it, but also uh, have the money to send me there is just awesome. And that just shows you that why they're the best station in the, in the state to, to work for. So I'm thankful for that. And hopefully all of y'all are enjoying the coverage too. Uh, whether it's on on uh, on 1037 The Buzz or on social media or whatever it is. So 
that that's just it's it's a great thing. So I'm not complaining. It's just you know crazy. It's just crazy how it's all going down and everything like that. But uh, I just want to give everybody an update on that and how I'm going to try to approach it while I'm in Omaha for the podcast as well. And I'll say this, and I'm not trying to say I'm a lucky charm, but I can't tell you how awesome it is. And those of you who listen to this podcast, you've been a part of it too. Like I've I I got to go to both Elite Eight appearances. I was up in Indianapolis for the entire NCAA tournament. I was over in Buffalo. I was over in San Fran for the NCAA tournament and the Elite Eight runs. I was awesome. I was in SEC tournament in Hoover when Arkansas won the SEC tournament finally for the first time in Razorback baseball history. I was there for that. I was there for the Outback Bowl down there in Tampa. And so far, I've been in this run from Stillwater to Chapel Hill and, and all of that. So, like, I am just – like, this is awesome. Like, I am living the dream, baby. And uh, I'm – I'm just so thankful for it. And thank you for all, all of you following along because that's what makes it fun is being able to, to talk all about it with y'all and to have fun with it that way too. So I'm going to keep it going. I'm going to do my best up there in Omaha to, to try to bring you some great coverage and some great content. And yeah, just be sure to, to keep following along. And you know my Twitter handle, my Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is. You got any questions? You got any you know requests? Uh, cons- you know, whatever it is, just hit me up. And uh, we'll have fun because I always want to hear from you and anything you guys want to talk about and all that. But appreciate all of you listening into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.